Real people, real interviews. I just have to say that I object strenuously to your use of the word hilarious. Hard hitting questions. What do you think about feminism? Do you like it? Taking you to the cutting edge of truth. Yeah, well, Last Jedi is one of the worst movies ever made, and it was very clear that Brian Johnson doesn't like Star Wars. Kyle pulls no punches. I want to ask how how you're able to sleep at night. Ethan brings bone-shattering common sense from the top rope. If I may, how double dare you? This is the Babylon Bee Interview Show. All right, well, Babylon Bee listeners, a couple of years ago, uh, I had started to see some new gorgeous comics popping up on my Facebook feed. Oh, thank you. And it's not Axe Cop or Bear Mageddon. Oh. Although those are also gorgeous. (laughs) (laughs) These comics had had a lot less uh, blood (laughs) and fewer bears and fewer axes and fewer cops. Oh. So, uh, no, this is, this was a... going downhill fast. This is not, yeah. I know you're losing interest, Ethan. (laughs) But this was a a, a comic called Ref Tunes. And we got in touch with the guy who does these and his name is Paul Cox. And we are bringing him on today. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing well. So, I gotta ask, I I gotta ask, sir, are you, did you follow Adam Ford and his comics in years past? Uh, I did, yeah. Yeah. He had some really good comics. I uh, I ask because it was kind of like there was this void in the Christian comic space. I don't even know if that's a real space, you know, Christian web comics. Oh, so it's not sports comics? I thought it was ref. Ref tunes, ref like tune. a ref. Ref. I was ready to really not understand. No. <laughs> not, no. Uh, Ethan. I'm sorry. We have this whole document typed up with all the information and you didn't I keep even... seeing the word ref. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> that's the guy in the striped, stri- uh, striped shirt. So you were really checked out. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. Re- you realized there was no bears... And you thought it was about sports. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, Kyle can take this one. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. I did notice that you're an excellent artist, though. I want to tell you that. Yeah. Which is... Uh, uh, thank you. Christianity needs good artists. So thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes, they thank do. Thank you for selling out to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry. I'm derailing Kyle. No, it's given, good. The good, the good interview is Kyle. We're buddies sitting around. Uh, yeah. We're just sitting around. Yeah, it's all good. No, I was just saying that there was like a void because Adam stopped doing his comics mm. and you didn't have that, you know, he did comics that he would do things that were similar to what you do, Paul, where, where he takes an right. old an old Reformation quote or something or Bible verse and he turned it into kind of a visual medium and you do that. Yours is a little more like, uh, like he would kind of do them at like, like the oatmeal style where it was like a long essay done mm-hmm. visually yeah. and you do a more like kind of a contained one frame or, or, or several frame comic yeah usually usually one frame and it's usually centered around a quote from a person from church history and yeah i wondered i wondered if you would you'd bring up that void because i i felt it too when he left it was like where where are all these these good comics and i guess like when i started ref tunes all i really wanted to do was uh make some funny cartoons about reformers. But then it, it kind of turned into um, taking their quotes and illustrating them, which, which, is, which is, has been fun. Yeah, and there are some really interesting quotes from the reformers because <laughs> they, yeah. they had very colorful metaphors at times. I want to see more like Martin Luther insults <laughs> illustrated by you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to do that. Um, that could have been our um, list. <laughs> Right. I may, I may have uh, kind of drawn myself into a corner by 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 choosing a lot of like the the more inspirational type quotes from the beginning, because now when I try to do something that's just funny for the sake of funny, I get comments like, what is the meaning behind this? Or <laughs> <laughs> what what, uh, what does this have to do with with uh with Christianity or something or like I'll make a joke about coffee and it'll, it'll get some very serious, serious uh, comments. Yeah. We get the opposite problem because we do so many jokes and we'll do something that's more serious. <laughs> yeah. I'm so like, confused. Wait, this is not funny. Why are you joking about this? Wait, I don't get the joke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't know why I, I was never like, I never got into the ref 
ref part of Christianity, Reformation stuff. Like you guys are hardcore on this uh, <laughs> stuff. And so I had never really, I, I just opened up some uh, Lutheran, some Lutheran insults. What pig styes could compare in goings on with you? That's one I've never read that. <laughs> yeah, so we, we could so have this a, guy was like uh, the Sean Hannity of the Reformation. So you could have you could have the Pope rolling around in the mud, <laughs> and Martin Luther standing there screaming at him. <laughs> yes, uh, we're giving you ideas for comics. This whole podcast yeah, is going to be us just saying, well, "Hey, you that, should draw you this." Should draw whole, this. Uh, <laughs> that whole Luther insult generator is is just like these ones are apparently real. Gold, yeah, a gold. I saw the generator, but I wanted to get real ones. Well, the generator is real, but what they do is they take them and they uh, they chop them into like an in insult that you could tell your friend instead of just like how we wrote it to the Pope or whatever. Sorry, they also have the references to where he got where quotes are from on it. Yeah, right. So they paraphrase a bit, but it's they're real. We might need Dave to say some of these. He wouldn't say this. <laughs> you vulgar boar, blockhead, and lout, you donkey to cap all donkey to screaming your hee haws. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a gold comic idea right there. That's gold. <laughs> that's a flower. Do we have bed. to flower bed that donkey. Yeah, that is a flower bed moment. You are a crude donkey. And an donkey. You will remain. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, I'm I'm just getting in, I'm getting in the spirit here. Yeah, I I like it. <laughs> in the spirit of the reformers. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you are a brothel keeper and the devil's daughter in hell. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, we've read these. Jeez, can we move on? I like that you have just discovered Luther's just insults discovered, for the like first time. I'm like a kid on an airplane for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> they get better too. The devil rides you. <laughs> wow, I get. It. I'm starting to get it. I'm going to be the guy walking around in a Martin Luther T-shirt soon. Yeah, <laughs> you finally get it. I'm, I'm, we have converted you to ref. So I'm curious because because you know I I've worked in comics or it's 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 a rough it's a loose term saying worked in comics not saying that comics are easy they are fun to make but that you can actually make it a job uh, yeah now is it your job I'm curious I'm it, curious comics yeah is like do you job? is this how um, you make your living too making rough tunes kind of kind I of? mean it's not like like rough tunes has become like a part of my job. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to make a little bit of income from it, but my main job is freelance illustration. So okay. I, I mainly do freelance, but in that I do mainly comics, but they're not like syndicated comics. It's like comics explaining someone's product or something like that. Things you, like that. And do like you draw character designs for companies and things. Do you draw pictures for papists? Papists. For papists. Papists. <laughs> papists. <laughs> No Dan is like he, he's so embarrassed <laughs> right now. <laughs> We're giving him a papist, uh, a papist exam. I, I don't. I'm yeah. so out of loop on yes, Reformation stuff. Yes, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay. And atheists. Wow. I did some writing. I did some writing for a while for like copy editing, where it was like, describe this uh, half inch schedule eighty PVC elbow. Mm. You know, and I would have to type the description that was on the plumbing site, and it's like this is a very sturdy. <laughs> would you be like poetic about it? Like, well, you know, you try. The elbow curves like the the boa constrictor <laughs> in the jungle. <laughs> the albino, the albino snake around the neck of the antelope. Well, you know how it is working for an editor. They just send it back and say yeah. no. You know, you try <laughs> something like that. Oh, I know all about editors that send things back and say no. Actually, just kidding. You're not. You're not like that, Kyle. I just told you you could. You're just quiet. I just told you to illustrate Joe Biden walking around waving a rubber chicken, and I said, "Do whatever you want with it." So, Except I don't want to do rubber chicken. I think I'm gonna have him have a dead fish. You, there you go. See, and I give you the creative freedom. <laughs> and I got well, there's boundaries though. Editor. I was gonna <laughs> yeah. do a dead ferret, and I was like, "No, Kyle won't go for the dead ferret." Yeah. So, so Paul, you were into you were already doing freelance illustration. Decided to launch Reftoons. So when did you when did you get saved? Was that you know when you were a kid or? How long have you been doing ref tunes when you got saved? Yeah, that's what I'm curious about. <laughs> Wait, how long <laughs> have I been doing ref tunes and then yeah, yes, exactly. Like, so you started. Right. You just saw a market for. Yeah, I just saw a market, and then I and then you started. You said, jumped hey, this, on it. This yeah. Christian stuff is actually pretty good. Yeah, reformation. Yeah, this. <laughs> what we need is a super niche comic here. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm not sure like when specifically I was saved. I I kind of I grew up in a Christian family and uh 
<clears throat> going to church every Sunday. And uh, from a young age, I guess I really had a, I don't know, I was, I was interested. I, I mainly like, I would read my Bible during church when I was in like elementary school and I would read all of Paul's letters and I would main, specifically focus on the part where it said Paul, because that's my name. And I was just like, oh, there's a Paul in the Bible. And uh, <clears throat> that's that's kind of what got me interested in, like, reading the Bible. That's kind of vain, but. <laughs> <laughs> <Your name>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, were you, did you go to a reform, did you guys go to a reform church at the time? No, I, I grew up in the Free Methodist Church. And, that's uh, sad. So when did you get saved? Then? <laughs> So when did I get? Um, so I I don't know I just I I feel like I kind of grew into a, a desire to um, love God and um, be more into into His Word and understanding who He is and um, I think through high school I had a lot of questions um, that were not answered. Uh, that were just kind of blown off by, oh, just pray some more or read your Bible. Um, <clears throat> but it was really into my um, college years and after college where um, I really, I don't know if I came to a fuller understanding, um, but I, did, I didn't come into like reform theology until like five or six years ago or so. Um, when did you throw away the crack pipe? The crack pipe. <laughs> never. Oh, wow. I never Still had on. One. Oh. <laughs> Sad. Um, yeah, I, I don't have like, it's not like an interesting, like, come to Jesus story. It's just kind of, I just kind of. But you're creative. You can come up with something. <laughs> yeah, I could draw it. <laughs> yeah, I have a better time drawing than explaining. <laughs> So if if I could just walk around with a sketch pad and just show people instead of talk to them, that would be easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I do see some, uh, let me know if I'm correct here. I see some Bill Watterson influence on your artwork. Am I correct? Oh, I'm sorry. Who's that? Bill Watterson? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> was that a joke? I think it was a joke. <laughs> oh. I, you're, you're, uh, you're dry. Very dry. Yes. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, no. Yes, Bill love. Watterson is, was a huge influence. Him and Looney Tunes. I loved watching Looney Tunes growing uh, up. And yeah. I used to say I want to be a cartoonist and work for Warner Brothers when I was when I was a kid, <laughs> but that never happened. So we had similar childhoods. My two biggest influences <laughs> are probably Bill Watterson and The Far Side. So that's where I got my oh, love yeah. of good brushwork. I think I think a lot of people that don't draw don't realize that Bill Watterson is really a master. Like he's an, an amazing artist. Uh, yes, yeah. And then the far side, eh, he's a horrible artist, but like he is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, uh, and that's where I got my weirdness that. from. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember going to the library growing up and just checking out all of the Far Side comics. Yeah, and just, just bringing them home and binging them. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, kids these days don't know what they missed out on. Kyle, did you grow up on the far side in Calvin and Hobbes? Um, Kid, youngin? I did. Like in high school, I picked up all the Calvin and Hobbes collections and all the far side collections, and I just nice. devoured them. I loved both of those. Yeah. I, sadly, I was also, I got to admit, I was also into Garfield. I, I had a Garfield phase when I was like around 10. I think that Garfield is this weird thing where you're like fifth grade, sixth grade, funniest thing ever. And then, like, you get to, like, 8th grade, ninth grade, and you go, w I laughed at this yeah. at some point in my <laughs> right. life. I think that for me, there was a, like, beauty to the uh, simplicity of the, the, the character designs in Garfield that mm -hmm. I really wanted to learn how to... And, and he was so re repetitive in his style that, I don't know, mm -hmm. it, it was a good... There's, there's, a, there's a rut you can fall into as an artist. I'm sure you've seen guys like this, Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. they find their one artist they really like and they just draw like that guy and then they just look like a little copy of him. So it's like, oh, right. if you like this guy, but worse, <laughs> get my comics. <laughs> but if you can take from, you know, take take from all these different artists and kind of combine and find your own style, then that's the ideal. And I think Garfield was a good, uh, a good comic for me for a short period to learn to draw from because he has great line weight and all this stuff that I think, you know. well I think it was kind of like watching one of yeah. those old sitcoms where you realize that they just have one stereotype for every character yeah you know he just had 
<laughs> Garfield likes lasagna and hates Mondays. Likes lasagna. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> or whatever. And the Odie's and then, thing is kicking them off the you know, the table or whatever. And that they just use that in every, you know, once you realize that, you're like, oh, they're all the same. Mm-hmm. I have to say, though, I wish Bill Watterson, it's cool how much of a purist he is, but I wish he would just be a little bit more of a sellout. Like, just do like yeah. another 10 years or like. Yeah, give me a t-shirt. What I really want, I wish he'd just do graphic novel. Like, just do like, he wouldn't be stuck in the Sunday paper, you know. Right. You know, just go crazy. Do a book. <clears throat> Man, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I Maybe think he's everybody listening. wishes he would sell it. Everybody wishes. <laughs> yep. Well, that's the crazy thing is he'd stop doing it because of the pressures of syndication. And now, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, you could do whatever you want. He could kill <laughs> if he just did a Kickstarter or something. Oh, man. He'd be a I billionaire. Know. Right, he is right. Oh, I'm sure he already is, yeah. A gazillionaire. Yeah. Sorry. And then make those, uh, make those Hobbs dolls. Yeah, make yeah. the Hobbs dolls for me. <laughs> I named my son Calvin. Probably more about nice. over the comic than because I'm not a Calvinist. So. I was like 50 50 John Calvin and Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. 50 50? Yeah, but he turned out to be more like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes than John <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, I think ours was 50%. Well, we had the excuse that it was, I didn't want it to just purely be that I need my kid after a comic character. That's just, that's lame. But uh, my even though it's the best, it's the best one. But uh, we have a relative. We looked in the family tree and found like an old, old grandfather way in the back. <laughs> so that was your His excuse. name was Calvin. Like, oh, yeah. His <laughs> name after that guy a, we never met. It's after great, great also, uncle. Great, great also granddaddy. Also, just in case you become a Calvinist, you know. Yeah, maybe God You're sovereignly yeah, or never know. Might, yeah, I might. I'm open. <laughs> All right. I'm open to freely decide to become a Calvinist. All right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, if God wills it. <laughs> Paul, you, uh, you, you, live in, you live in Wisconsin. Canton. Wisconsin. Oh, can we, should we dox you? Do you want people to know that you live in Wisconsin? Yeah, there's care. so few people that live there, like people can find them now that you said that. Yeah, they, they've narrowed it down to about five people. At point. <laughs> Especially across the border. Oh, there he is. He's the one drawing <laughs> Reformation cartoons. Yeah. All right. The only, the only one in Wisconsin. One of the five uh, who draw Reformation. <laughs> yeah, so what's Wisconsin like? Uh, it's you got cold. any cool Wisconsin yeah. stories? Hmm. How cool tipping? Wisconsin stories. Uh, I don't know. We eat a lot of cheese, and we're kind of cheese snobs here. Come on now. Is that true? I, you know, our, that's a stereotype. Is that true? Is it true? It is, it is very true. Really? <clears throat> yeah, we get cheese curds from the grocery store all the time, and we mm. love them. Mm. Cheese curds are good. Ah. Squeaky cheese. Yes. Yep, yep, squeaky. When there was, and, uh, when we were growing up, there was a like an ad campaign on TV in California here saying how much better California cheese was than Wisconsin cheese. Do you guys remember really? This? Yeah, I, no, remember I didn't live, I didn't grow up here. No, I was very offended. Oh, okay, you saw the ads. Huh? <laughs> they played them in Wisconsin. That's just no. I just <laughs> that's amazing. I, just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I saw them on TV. Yeah, hmm. talking yeah. about California cheese or California milk. Hmm. You got to eat the California cheese, man. Uh, so no so good Wisconsin story. You got any good uh, chicken stories? Chicken stories? Um, oh, let's see. I have four chickens, and great story. I don't know. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't know. Chickens are chickens. The, there's. <laughs> they're insane. They're dumb. They're. I I went out there to collect eggs the other day, and right when I opened the door, one of them like lifted its head up from like a half-eaten egg, and like egg yolk dripped from its mouth as it's looking at me, kind of like the, uh, like the T Rex in Jurassic Park, or or the uh, the Wampa on Star Wars when he looks up, stuff just falls out of his mouth. <laughs> Did you uh, yell anything? Did you yell at a Martin Luther quote at him, such as this? You have set out to rub your scabby, scurvy head against honor. <laughs> chicken i was tempted <laughs> oh <laughs> but he's gonna that's gonna be the first chicken that we eat so oh have you ever chopped a chicken's head off i have yeah wow, i've never done that do you do the uh, i've heard there's different techniques you can use an axe or whatever but i heard you can just grab them by the head and like twist and they just their head comes off is that true uh i've not done that i used an axe okay yeah so. i know this guy that he like would he worked at a place where it was like a it was like, you know, putting can like putting lids on bottles or something. It was just rapid fire. So he's just like, he said, he showed me, you use like, you hook your two fingers <laughs> under the beak around the head and just like, you just whip your hand around like you're like, like you're like oh, whipping yeah, around yeah. a thing. And then uh, what, what would you whip around? What's something you whip like around? Like a this? rope? A jump rope? <laughs> Maybe like a lasso? I don't know. 
Yeah, like, like you're a swinging nunchuck. a lasso and it just goes and twists off and then the chicken goes running off without its head. It's a nunchuck. Yeah. Yeah, nunchuck. Yep. A nuncluck. Yeah. One of, yeah, one, we were, <laughs> one of, like, a few of the chickens got away and we had to chase them down. But I've never seen a running headless after chicken. After their head was off. You guys? Anybody else? A what? Ever seen a running headless chicken? I've never, I haven't even yes. seen a headless chicken. Yes, I have. See, Paul's got the real experience. We're stuck here in California where everything's, you know, Yeah, he's, he's Ethan just draws about it. Yeah, yeah I just draw. Like, I love the farm humor <laughs> growing up. So, all that blood. So, uh, <laughs> you're, so you're all into Reformation theology. Let's talk about that a little bit. Is he? So okay. what, uh, well, or, or well, sports riffs. <laughs> one of those. Or just yeah. references. Well, so how, what, we could try to talk about sports refs. Yeah, but. yeah. So what, uh, what attracted you to Reformed Theology? And, you know, I mean, it's kind of interesting that you got this comic that's just so focused in on this area of Reformation theology. So what, I mean, I don't know. Talk about that. What were you thinking? Well, what the heck were you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, what drew me into to it, I'm not sure. I think it was a slow turn. It was a slow fade. Um so there were a lot of problems at the church we were attending and um <clears throat> one of those was was leadership issues. Uh this was back in 2009 and when I say we it's me and my wife and just to clarify. <laughs> um but there were some problems going on and uh some abusive leadership issues and uh, they would let anything come through. They wouldn't vet any materials coming in to the church for like small groups, Bible studies and things like that. Uh, one of the video series that we were doing as like a small group in the church had like various pastors on it speaking on different issues. And there was this one pastor that I heard and I was like, oh, wow, I've never heard anyone preach from the Bible like that at all word, word <laughs> like <From the> Bible. <laughs> verse by verse. And I was like, Oh, I want to, I want to look this guy up and see if he has some more. Are you going to Joel Osteen's church? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Huh? Um, no, but you know, <laughs> he's not in Wisconsin, No, it's uh, not. <laughs> but he has clones everywhere. He does. There, there's a lot. Yeah. There's plenty of clones out there. So um, I think, I think a lot of the churches we went to were, um, maybe possibly headed that way. Mm. Uh, but so, so I looked up this guy when I got home and started listening to him and he was talking about God's ultimate authority. He had the series on ultimate authority and he was going verse by verse. I don't remember what book he was going through of the Bible, uh, but it really struck me. And he, he kind of gave out some resources, which part of, some of those were like the White Horse Inn and uh, Michael Horton's book, Christless Christianity. So I went and grabbed that book, read through that, and it's it was basically talking about my church and like if if Christ is not like you you can you can be going to church, but if Christ is not preached, it's not not really. It's a it's Christless Christianity that you're you're learning you're learning moralistic, mm -hmm. um, like self help. Yeah, self help stuff, and it and I it was answering a lot of questions that I had that that were never answered by my my pastors growing up, and um, like I said earlier, a lot of the. Um, answers I got were, were just go read your Bible more or go pray more or, um, or we can't, we can't study deeper into this because not everybody in the group wants to go deeper. So you're on your own. <clears throat> um, so I found in reformed theology, which I didn't realize at the time, but all these people that I was getting into, were Calvinistic and um, they were um, going through the Bible uh, like I had never done before and teaching me how to study my Bible. And I didn't know that uh, 
that the Old Testament pointed to Jesus until until I started looking into this and um, because I was always taught topical sermons and they would just dance around different topics and not really address anything um, very deep. Uh, so <clears throat> when I started getting into reformed theology, my wife was not on the same page. So you, and, you always uh, thought you always thought Goliath was a metaphor. Yeah, yeah. Giants. I mean, like you're, we're David. We have to be. We have to conquer our giants. And right. When actually David is Christ, and we're the cowering Israelites. <clears throat> I'm offended. What? <laughs> you should be. <laughs> I'm not reformed, so I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know if I'm reformed. I, I assume I am reformed, but I don't know. You know I'm always so confused you, when you, you guys talk about this You can't just assume you're reformed. It's not a thing that you just... I don't know. I'm not a papist. Well, so yeah, so all, all Protestants would, would be... Have some heritage from the Reformation. But you have but to like talk about officially reformed theology, there's a specific... Grab on. You have to have like a badge. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the, the heart of it is of like... I didn't mean to interrupt him so bad. The heart of it is like the, 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 the five solas or the six solas or however many you okay. want to say there are. And, and I'm the, sure I genuinely The agree. doctrines of grace yeah. and... 37. The 37 solas. I'm surprised you guys haven't been more like intense about converting me to this. Um... Who, me? Well, we, we just no like just Kyle, every yeah all of us. we just we just trust oh. that God will do it eventually. <laughs> okay, we're Calvinists, you know. We don't evangelize. <laughs> <laughs> I, so yeah, I don't. I'm not like I'm not a like a scholar on any of this stuff. I don't. I'm still learning, and that's one of the reasons I started Ref Tunes is to just kind of uh, illustrate things that I'm learning. Yeah, that's what it seems like to me is that you read a really good devotion or something and then you go, I should draw that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I'm reading through some of the Puritan things right now and a lot of the tunes, recent tunes have come out of that. So would you ever consider making Arminian tunes? (laughs) Uh, I'd consider it. (laughs) And then reject it? Sad. (laughs) Reject it. Actually, I thought about doing some, uh, <clears throat> uh, what's his name? Oh, yeah, G.K. Chesterton. G.K. <laughs> Chesterton. Yes. yes. Wait a minute. Now, wait you're, a minute. now, now Ethan's sitting wait a minute, there. Wait a minute. Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> My ears just perked up. Now we're smoking with tobacco. I, I, did, I just stood I up like a, a meerkat. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see the sketch. Can we see the sketch of G.K. Chesterton? <laughs> we need um, to see this. Yeah, I'll post it sometime. All right, cool. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I have like a whole Google Docs filled with Chesterton quotes because he was hilarious. Closest, yeah. So so many too. Like the other day, I remember the other day so, Kyle was preparing for a speech and he's like, "Hey, you got a Chesterton quote on why comedy is important or whatever?" <laughs> and I started looking and I found like I found him like thirty. He sent me like a dozen of them. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> too many!" And they were all perfect. And they're all gold. You can't yeah. decide. Yeah. But, but I've, I've since starting rough tunes, I've, I've learned that there are certain things that I can post that are fine and other things that I post, um, or that I, that I cannot post without getting a lot of flack for, um, and a lot of those have to do with like hymns. Hmm. So I posted, um, uh, I have these two, two tunes of, of hymn writers. One is uh, Fanny Crosby. The other is Horatio Spafford who wrote it as well with my soul. Mm -hmm. That one I get the most flack for because I mean, it's a really good song, but the, the uh, writer ended up like forming some sort of cult, leaving Christianity and forming a cult or something like that. (laughs) Oops. So, uh, so we're not allowed to like that song now. I guess not, but I, I posted anyways, and I so love he's the like song. the. <laughs> it's one of my favorite songs. So he's like the uh, wait, like Pedro the Lion of his day. Pedro the Lion, or who else? There's all these like Christian artists that. Who's the guy that sing? Uh, he's the you Le- 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 beautiful Le- things. Right, he he did. Oh, too, Gungor, right? yeah, that's a good fit. Gungor, Gungor, Gungor. Oh. Is that? I thought that was a Tolkien character. Gungor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's the troll like in which, Moria. Which, he's one of the trolls. <laughs> yeah, Gungor. Yeah, he he ended up being like Ditched pantheist, Jesus. like we are all God. Yeah, or like oh, there yeah. is no God. Or the I kiss dating goodbye guy. There's a whole list. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're like jar, jars of clay. <laughs> Wait, jars of clay ditched Jesus? 
Well, didn't wasn't the the lead singer of Jars of Clay? I don't know. I don't he know. always sounded like a hippie when he was singing. Oh so no, I'm, maybe I'm thinking. No, of, you're uh, you're thinking Cayman's of... Call. No, oh, is it Cayman's Call? Was it? I'm well, throwing out all these names and people about, are gonna be like, everybody's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Hey, this is satire. What about right? T Bone? So, yeah, he's still good. He's probably he's probably good. Carmen's good. Carmen's still good. He's a life coach. Oh, have you ever met Carmen? Paul? Yeah, not a death coach. He's a life coach. Oh boy, have I ever met Carmen? Yeah, no, or seen him? I've been to a Carmen concert. But <gasps> we got a but. But, but <laughs> I was at uh, this thing called Life Fest up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's like a music festival, and he was one of the headliners. What? And <laughs> oh, I went okay. With a friend, Take like, your time. We, Tell this story. Take your time. Go ahead. This needs this time. So we were walking around. (laughs) We'll make it interesting, though. (laughs) Looking for for a band to watch, but we couldn't find any good ones. So we walked over to the Carmen set. (laughs) It was that. uh, It makes it sound like it wasn't very crowded. At nighttime, there there was lots of smoke, lots of lights. You mean like fog, right? Not smoke. Like like pot smoke? into the crowd. Like uh, like fog, okay. fog smoke, <clears throat> like like smoke machines. Got gotcha. you. Okay. You know? Um, because it's a Carmen concert. Yeah, well, you never know. He was very dramatic, and he was very. What was he wearing? Black. Pure black. <laughs> like a black suit. Okay. A suit. That's and awesome. uh, so <laughs> he was being very dramatic. <laughs> there were lots of. Middle-aged women jumping up and down, screaming. And <laughs> one woman had this giant. We walked walked into the back, and next to us, to the left, was this woman holding this giant poster of Carmen. With it was like poster board with a, like a giant picture of him, and it had said like his unbuttoned something, shirt, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Yeah, and. Uh, she was jumping up and down, screaming, I love you, Carmen! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we saw that, and we looked at each other, and we uh, decided to walk away. <laughs> what, you didn't watch it? So, uh, we, watched, we watched for a little bit. Did, but he like, have, did he have any pyrotechnics? I don't remember the pyrotechnics. I just, I just have that image of this lady... With the poster. The ladies loved him. So he's like a one man boy band. He's, he's a man, yeah, he's a like, man band. I wonder if he has like, like a Satan guy that like dresses the, up and comes on stage and he punches yeah, him and stuff. I bet he does. He's like the Christian Fabio or something. <laughs> yeah. It's always over your mind. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so you're right there. You were you were so close. Yeah, you were you were, you were so within I almost spitting distance of greatness. His sweat and sold it online. <laughs> Ethan would have purchased it. I would have bought it. it. I, I keep forgetting to tell that <laughs> this, this is going to sound because we talked about Carmen so much. And I've never told the story that I, that I made it up, but I was at like our first time coming to California. We were at breakfast, my family at this hotel. that was supposed to be a fancy, cool hotel. And I saw this guy sitting behind us. And I'm like, that guy looks so familiar. Who is that guy? Like, so I like put him in my head. I'm like, I'm going to figure out at some point who that guy is. that's having breakfast behind us. I later realized like, it's, it was Carmen. That was Carmen. <laughs> So I have a Carmen story. I think. I'm it pretty sure it was him. I'm pretty sure. It might have just been any 40-year-old Italian guy. It could have just been a guy, guy that looked a lot like him, yeah. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was Carmen. I liked Paul's story better. Yeah, it was better, yeah. But <laughs> both had potential to be a lot better if we had like just taken the time yeah. to yeah. dig a little deeper. Sad. Yep, yep. Hmm. Very sad. So, Paul, you mentioned that you get some online... Uh, pushback yeah, yeah i want things. to hear about the pushback so you'd mentioned the hymn writers i'm sure like pictures of jesus oh, you'll get a i like oh, the weird yeah. i like the weird stuff christians get upset about because when i worked on veggie tales we got some of these so let's let's stuff. hear some let's hear some paul cox hate mail let's do it oh yeah um let's see i didn't even know like there's this term 2cv right do you guys know what that is yeah the second commandment violation pictures of jesus okay. basically yeah. right i've been learning about this I didn't know what that meant until I started ref tunes. I didn't know what that <laughs> abbreviation was. I thought it was like a, I don't know, like coronavirus or something. No, <laughs> I come. Uh, I came down with two CV. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I I had posted these <clears throat> this comic. Like I I thought, well, let's why not do some 
Bible verses, you know, that, that might be better than better sometimes than just focusing on all these old dead guys. Um, and just post some images depicting different things from the word of God. And, um, one of them was like, uh, the fiery dove depicting the Holy spirit mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. representing, not depicting. <laughs> representing the Holy Spirit. You got to be very careful here. You're on very thin ice, Paul. Careful. Yeah. I know. Breaking breaking chains of some people and <laughs> of some dead people and making them alive. Oh, Christ. I remember that and, one. I liked that one. Uh, <laughs> I got I got a lot of people messaging me saying that it was two CV or or even like when I do the catechism questions, I'll illustrate little things. I I try very hard because I know that some. People are very sensitive to this um, in the Reformed community. Well, I know now. so (laughs) You found out very quickly. (laughs) Yes. It's amazing what you find out when you start posting things to the public online. Uh, So, so I, I drew, I try not to show like pictures of Jesus. So I drew like from behind in a, in the manger, two little baby arms sticking out. And oh, immediately man. I get two C V exclamation point five times. Uh, wow, so you can't even do a baby, huh? Yeah, I guess. These or, guys. or arms. Even just arms. What do so, they do at Christmas? They just I, they so, just lose they completely just have like <laughs> bowel movement well, involuntary because they can't you know handle that, what's happening. Don't you know that Christmas is a papist tradition? Yeah. Mm, sad. <laughs> <laughs> mm, papists. So yeah, there's. I get people telling me that so my Christmas tunes are evil as well. Reformers don't oh, don't celebrate Christmas. I guess not. I didn't know the that hardcore ones. Until. It's hardcore. It's all you know. It's a spectrum, right? Are you allowed to say Christ in the word Christmas? Or you have to say like you uh, have to say happy holidays, pa- papal miss. <laughs> or what? you could use a uh, you could use one of these. Uh, Martin Lutherisms, and you'd say this is a, it's rascal miss. <laughs> but yeah, so so I I try to steer clear of. Well, <laughs> I don't try to steer clear of like anything that has to do with Jesus, but <laughs> I try to steer clear from drawing. Sure, sure. Drawing so, him so is your of the Godhead if I have to? So do you go to uh, a Reformed church? I go to an. Evangelical Free Church uh-huh. that is um, like leans that that holds, more to, that holds more to Reformed theology. Gotcha. So you're not like you're not like a confessional hardcore. Like you're gonna you know you you're you're on board with the two CV and the anti Christmas stuff yourself necessarily, but you know no. you're, you're sensitive to that because you know a lot of people in your audience have concerns about that. Yeah, and I know that like it's a like. There's people whose conscience is really bound by that, and so I don't want to. I don't want to make them upset by doing something that doesn't necessarily need to be done. Sure. Uh, if I can find another way to do it. Sure. Um, we and that's. I guess that helps me to be a little more creative. Sure. When we when we wrote our book for the Babylon Bee, we uh, we had this. Uh, the, our cover, Barnes and Noble didn't like our cover image. And so they said that we needed to change it to a an actor dressed up as Jesus with a big goofy grin taking a selfie. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not like, uh, at least me personally, I'm not hardcore like 2CV guy or anything, but I was like, yeah, that's not going to fly. It's still, yeah, even yeah. me and I have no shame. That's too far. <laughs> I have no shame violating the second commandment. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I, uh, there, I won't try to do a picture of God. I, that, right, that's my exactly. line. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I no, I won't do that. Even like I, there are there is a line <clears throat> for me as well, and like if it's something that's going to be like making fun of God or making fun of Jesus or something like that, you know, I'm not I'm not going to do that. Kyle's fine. With that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sure, sure. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm I'm pretty bad you myself. Got some things to work through, Kyle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Try. <laughs> so, uh, Paul, I want to. Are we going to do? We're going to do a subscriber portion. Might as well. I always do. Right, so, before we go into our subscriber portion, we'll talk about his history of crack dealing and 
We're, Paul's going to give us some juicy stories on his history of crack and chicken. Wisconsin seals, cheese trade. Smuggling crack That's inside right. chickens in yeah. Wisconsin. And hollowed out chicken carcasses. <clears throat> hollowed out cheese wheels. He like shoves the into the hole where the head was and then puts the, sews the head back on. That's right. With my taxidermy skills. <laughs> I guess that was the plot of Breaking Bad though, wasn't it? Was they, it? They hit oh yeah, the, they El Pollo the, Loco or whatever it's They called. hit it in the chicken. Oh yeah. And, uh, I know, that's, <laughs> El Pollo Loco is a real, a real a restaurant. <laughs> Los Hermanos Chicanos. <laughs> we are not slandering El Pollo Loco in any way. Los they Poyos, have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, and, but we wanted to give you a chance. Uh, we wanted to let our listeners know that Paul has a collection coming out. So uh, you're doing a collection of, is it all your stuff on your site or why, why don't you just talk about it? Because you know more about it than I do. <laughs> Well, the collection is, it's, it's ready for pre-order, and it is my comics, my Reftoons comics from 2017 through 2019. So anything in that time span, it's from the beginning of Reftoons through the end of last year. Um, it's collection one. And that's available through for pre-order through the Reftoons shop, um, which is... Um, you can get there from reftunes.com and click the store button. Um, <clears throat> or you can go to reftunes.myshopify.com. It's very, very, uh, professional. <laughs> yeah. When can we, um, when can we expect GK Chester tunes? GK Chester tunes. Um, after I finish all the, uh, Pura tunes. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Um, wow. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sometime, maybe you'll see Chesterton. All right. That was pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, that was good. We're, all, we're we're a fan of a good pun. Yeah. And also, you you yeah. you illustrated a uh, take on The Pilgrim's Progress, which is one of my favorite right. books. And uh, yeah, so that's also on your site. Yeah, my wife and I uh, turned The Pilgrim's Progress into a poem for as a children's book um i illustrated it and we both came up with the storyline based off of john bunyan's classic so we it's very very much condensed <laughs> um into into like 40 some pages um and that is available through reftunes.com click on the store store button or you can get it through Hesed and Emmett.com, which is the publisher, H and D publishing. Right. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. Well, and you guys should all follow Ref Tunes because it's a real good it's encouraging when I see it on my feed. I get yeah. I get a little Puritan theology, a Bible verse, a Spurgeon quote. And it's Christian comics that are not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That should be your tagline. <laughs> it should be. So follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and check them out at reftunes.com. And then we're going to go into some juicy stuff. Oh, yeah. In All our right. subscriber portion. Coming up next for Babylon B subscribers. He's the one that kind of brought me out of my cage stage listening Wait, to what's him. that mean? Cage stage? Cage stage. Give us hot takes on all the reformers, and here we go. John Calvin. He listen to Pavarotti, he'd have a plane out of his window, and like in the, and then he'd just fart freely, and he would not acknowledge it, just and just keep opera, flowers, farting. I say, hey, I doesn't can- get that. I'm too old for LOL. LOL is like, I can't write it without feeling like I've sold my soul to Satan. <laughs> Enjoying this hard-hitting interview? Become a Babylon Bee subscriber to hear the rest of this conversation. Go to BabylonBee.com slash plans for full-length ad-free podcasts. Kyle and Ethan would like to thank Seth Dillon for paying the bills, Adam Ford for creating their job, the other writers for tirelessly pitching headlines, the subscribers, and you, the listener. Until next time, this is Dave DeAndrea, the voice of the Babylon Bee. 